Hey folks, this is Matt Doyle, MLSsoccer.com's armchair analyst, back with another episode of Between the Lines. Today is the third of a three-part series looking at possession, the long build, how teams can use that to pull apart, stretch, and eventually punish a defense. In particular, we're going to take a look at ball movement. One sequence showcasing side-to-side -side lateral movement, the other front-to-back north-south vertical movement, and how both can be effective in punishing a defense. This first is an 11 pass sequence for Houston. Nine to 10 field players touch the ball, all after a turnover caused by their high press against Kansas City. Boniek Garcia plays it back to Rico Clark. Clark plays it back to Corey Ash. Very comfortable, very patient. Now it's being chased the whole time by Paulo Nagamura, who ends up taking himself out of the play here. Ash has played the ball square. Nagamura chases it, but he's on his own. And he never recovers until a split second after the shot is taken. Now nobody on KC knows exactly where to go to exert their pressure because Houston's doing such a good job of moving the ball side to side very quickly. Once they've played east-west for a bit, they go north-south and eventually work the ball into the box. Will Bruins' touch isn't great, but he gets the ball to Boniek, who then squares for Brad Davis, who has all the time in the world to pick out the far corner. Nobody's faster than the ball, and Houston showed it there. Even KC, the fittest team in the league, ended up being a step slow. Now this next one is a 14 pass scoring sequence in which 8 of 10 Union field players get at least one touch on the ball, but it's central defender Amobi Ikugo doing the bulk of the heavy lifting. If your central defenders can pick out passes and make plays, that means you could push more attackers into the final third and overload the defense. So because Philadelphia is so confident in Ikugo, and Ikugo is so confident in his own skills, they can play a waiting game and just pick the right moment when TFC presses a little too far and then hit hard and fast. Right here, Akuga steps through the TFC press, then cuts the midfield out of the play with one pass. He finds the feet of Jack McInerney, who's peeled off the back line, and neither central defender went with him, which means he has all the time he needs to pick his head up and hit a switch. When he picks out overlapping left back Gabe Farfan on the left flank, it's now five versus five, a mini breakout for Philadelphia. The secondary benefit of relying on your central defenders to make plays is that you force the opposition to become very narrow, and TFC falls right into that trap. They're extraordinarily narrow here, and Farfan has all the room he needs to pick out Freddie Adu. Adu takes a simple direct touch and then fires low and hard. Now Milos Kosic should have done better, but the Union's victory was getting in position to have that good a look in the first place. And all that space was opened up because of Philadelphia's ball movement, advancing, retreating, eventually sucking TFC out and hanging him out to dry. Now that'll do it for us this week, and thanks for joining us on this three-part series. We'll be back soon with another episode of Between the Lines.